Hello. Hey, so thanks for joining us this afternoon for some history chats, if you're joining us live. A um, little bit of, of uh, fun fun background here for this, this program today. Um, this morning, we did not have internet here at the Woodson History Center. Um, so that was fun. We weren't sure whether or not we would get it back up and running by the time that we had to do this or not. So we decided to do, uh, rather than go somewhere else and, you know, um, hope that the internet worked there and we weren't going to get distracted and everything, um, Gary and I sat down at, um, at our usual place and just did it off stream. I recorded the thing and then I edited a video and, of course, as soon as I finished rendering, I was going to go, go home and upload it from there, our internet came back on. So, um, the, the, it, you know, we could have done this live, but since we did it already once this morning, what I'm going to do for everyone is I'm just going to play the video. Um, and hopefully, you know, that works. Um, it, it might be a little confusing because I will then jump on and explain uh, why we are not doing it live, but that's the background. So uh, what this does mean is we are live, so I am monitoring everything. If you have any questions or comments, you know, you can feel free to put those into the, the chat as well. Um, and uh, yeah. So I think, um, again, because I, I do a little bit of introduction, I'm just going to shift over here to the full screen. There we go. And I'm just going to hit play. So um, yeah, enjoy. Here is the program. Hello. Welcome to History Chats this afternoon. Um, it's going to be a little different uh, today. Actually, I'm just going to jump ahead. You get you get the idea, right? Where, where we don't have internet. Let's see. Where do we change? That's probably too far. The end of this month, uh, towards the end of the month, next weekend stuff real quick for you. All right, um, I'm going to shut up to and our let me talk. Yankee Bookstore for making it possible for us to do this. Uh, both History Speaks and History Chats. Um, our programming um, that we do all year round. Um, speaking of speaks and chats, or our programming here, um, we've got a couple things coming up. Um, later at the end of this month, uh, towards the end of the month, next weekend, um, on Saturday, we have the return of our History Speaks lecture series. And Paul Whitaker will be telling, telling us all about apples, botany, and cider. Um, it's going to be a great program. Definitely knows his stuff on this. And uh, yeah, hopefully you will join us. That's going to be Digital, again, hopefully we'll have internet by then. I'm, I'm sure we will. Um, but yeah, that'll be on 2 p.m. on Saturday, and that usually goes for about an hour. And that'll be on the 23rd. Um, coming up a little bit sooner next week, um, just to let you know, uh, we're going to have um, a, continue our programming on people you should know from Marathon County. We're going to talk about a teacher, uh, Luis Elster, who was a fourth grade teacher for many, many years here in Wausau as well as being a musician and, and a, a, you know, a personality in, in a lot of ways uh, that, that very notable. Um, I think it's going to be a fun program. I'm looking forward to telling you about her next week. So that'll be Thursday at 1230 as well. All right. Well, that's the business. Um, again, I'm going to put a pause here and bring in Gary Gusselman, um, our librarian and historian, and he will tell you about Ingwall S. Horgan. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Um, this morning in our continual uh, programs dealing with people you should know, uh, we're going to talk about Ingwald S. Horgan. And I thought of this in, in the light of our current Marathon County Park exhibit that's going currently on here at the Marathon County Historical Society. So you should take a look at that. But as, uh, as we talk about history, as we talk about uh, our parks, as we talk about our cultural landscape, so to speak, which I'll talk a little bit about. We, it's always about the people. And when we talk about parks, especially this year, uh, celebrating 101 years of Marathon County Parks, uh, let's talk about one of the people that played a big part in that. Uh, this headline later on, this is 1972, many years after uh, Ingwald Horgan uh, left the supervisory capacity of the Marathon County and Wausau Park System. Uh, it was labeled as Marathon County Park System, one of the best in the state. 
and uh, Ingwald Horgan had a lot to do with that, and we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, today. So first of all, a little bit about Mr. Horgan, born in Mitchell, Iowa, went to college at Iowa State College, which is now Iowa State University in Ames. Uh, he left a little bit of the uh, for the U.S. Forest Service, um, but then in 1925 he was hired by the Wasatch and Marathon County Park Committees. We'll talk a little bit about that, but there's a little bit of a backstory, uh, so I, and that starts with Cyrus Yawkey. When Cyrus Yawkey came here in 1900, uh, built his house, and started his uh, venture here in Wasa. He was very early interested in, in, in the shape and the form of, of parks and of, and of the landscape here in Wassa. He soon hired in 1911, he, he hired Anthony Morrell and Arthur Nichols, landscape architects out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, to come and design his garden in preparation for the, for the wedding of his daughter. And Morell and Nichols were so noted already in Minneapolis, curiosity about how Cyrus found Morell and Nichols. We're not quite sure about that story. But the design of the Yawkey Garden and the city lot treatment was incorporated into Morell and Nichols' book on landscape architecture. So this is the Yawkey plan. Um, so, you know, already again, Cyrus Yawkey, very involved with landscape architecture uh, in Wassa with his garden. And of course, we'll be the story of Cyrus Yawkey and parks. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So again, we talk about one of the colleagues of Morella Nichols in Minneapolis, which was Charles Ramsdale, uh, a, a landscape architect out of uh, Minneapolis, very noted. Uh, he had been noted in Wausau already, but it was the Hammond Park uh, story that sort of starts it all off because Charles Ramsdale was the uh, hired by Sue Hammond Ray, um, who at that time owned this little segment of uh, parkland on the corner of Grand Avenue and, and Thomas Street. Um, and she was trying to develop and building this park. She hired Charles Ramsdale to design this park. Little be known that one of the people working for Charles Ramsdale at that time was one Ingwald Horgan, coming out of uh, sort of maybe an internship with Ramsdale out of the universe, out of Iowa State University. So here he was uh, doing some initial design work for Ramsdale uh, in 19. Well, we're saying 1923, 1924, we're not exactly sure. We know that Horgan, after his little bout with Ramsdale, went to work for the Forest Service, but then he was soon back in Wasson. We'll tell that story in a little bit later. But again, Horgan was already no, was noted, so to speak, in, in Wausau and starting to take notice of landscape architecture and landscape architects here in Wassa. So soon in 1925, um, it was stated at the bottom of the minutes of the joint meeting of the Marathon County Park Commission and the Wausauk Park Commission. It was noted that it stated at the joint meeting that C.C. Yawkey had been in correspondence with Ingwald S. Horgan, who was well recommended as a park superintendent and Mr. Yawkey has requested to engage Mr. Horgan and have him report for duty as early as the date as possible. So again, here we see Mr. Yawkey. Must, we must say that Mr. Yawkey was uh, the first president of the Marathon County um, Park Commission back in 1920 when it was originally started. 
So again, we sing uh, Mr. Yaki was in touch with Mr. Ramsdale. Most, most likely it was Mr. Ramsdale who was giving the final um, okay for, for Mr. Yaki to hire Ingwald Horgan. So then we, so then now we start the Ingwald Horgan story. Uh, quite a unique story, quite a lengthy story, 1925 uh, through 1965. A lot of, a lot of work that he did. And w one must say that Ingwald Horgan, a landscape architect, but also involved in the early 1920s, what we came to be called the City Beautiful Movement, uh, and also uh, the developing of the landscape as a culture unto itself, the landscape, uh, cu uh, the cultural landscape, and his influence in Marathon County and the city of Wausau was truly going to be remarkable. And when Mr. Horgan came to Wausau, he initially uh, was involved with the development of Marathon, Co Marathon Park on Wasa's west side. This, of course, was uh, already in development. The, uh, the Park Commission uh, was starting to take uh, possession of the park. Buildings were starting to be built. Uh, of course, a lot of Marathon County Park would see further development during the, the, during the New Deal, and we talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But again, uh, the development of Marathon Park was perhaps Mr. Horgan's first, was Mr. Fir, uh, was his first endeavor. And again, the design for Marathon Park was by Charles Ramsdale. So we see a lot of influence of Mr. Ramsdale uh, in not only the city of Wasa, but we we'll also talk about him with regard to Marathon County. So again, we see Marathon, Marathon Park being an early an early park um, that uh, certainly saw Mr. Horgan's influence as it grew to be a, a major park in our city. Um, the stone walls, of course, are a story with regard to the work of the Work Progress Administration during the New Deal. But again, uh, um, Mr. Horgan's touch certainly was with regard to this. And the the buildings, were, of course, were now being built uh, in Marathon Park, uh, designed some die by Alexander Eschweiler um, uh, and a variety of other people, of course, in, Mar in, in the city of Wausau. So, but with regard to, again, going back to Mr. Horgan, again, it was in the early 1920s placed within the whole city beautiful movement. And this little headline, you know, I think says a little part of what he was about. Park Commissioner Ingwald, it's in, uh, Ingwald here, but that's a misspelling of... Um, his first name, Horgan Plan Citywide Beauty Contest. So he initially, he was very involved in starting to be, have Wausau and Marathon County become a beautiful place. And it was always a part of this that was uh, he incorporated into his landscape, landscape design throughout the many parks in Marathon County and Wausau. One other story that Ingwall Horgan became involved with was the, the development of city pools in the city. Uh, here we have a little note that Mr. Horgan is going to Chicago to inspect pools, um, a municipal ba bathing place. This was soon in 1929. It, it, again, uh, again, the development of the city pools being traced back to to Mr. Horgan. Again, uh, but it was soon, uh, soon we had a pool on, um, on the Harrison Boulevard and Sherman Street area off the Wisconsin River, came to be called McDonald Pool, now Riverside Park. Again, our first pool, 1930, all with the development of, uh, by Mr. Horgan, Park Superintendent. Again, it proved to be a very popular space, a very popular place 
in the city of Wausau for, for a pool and during our summer uh, hot seasons. Another story that we want to talk about, uh, Mr. Horgan soon got involved with other parks, of course. We'll talk a little bit about those. Um, Oak Island, of course, was one of the early parks in, in our system um, off of River Drive, now off of River Drive in downtown Wassa. Uh, Oak Island, again, the shelter and the, and the shelter at Oak Island was developed in conjunction with the New Deal and the Works Progress Administration. A lot of park development happened during the New Deal. We'll talk some about the specifics. But again, Mr. Horgan in the design and the layout of Oak Island was very instrumental in the development of that park and how that came to be, and especially across the, the bridge onto what we now call Fern Island. Uh, another park that was very instrumental in the early, in the 1920s was Stewart Park. Um, Margaret Stewart donated some land to the city of Wausau in the mid-1920s for a park across the street from their home on 10th Street. Stewart Park on the corner of 10th Street and Scott Street uh, came to be quite a notable area for public performances and a variety of other things. It really is a beautiful and incredible park within our park system. And Mr. Uh, um, Margaret Stewart uh, hired some Chicago architects to, to landscape this place. And it is really one of the true gems of the city, all happening pretty much under the guidance of Mr. Horgan. Uh, I want to just quickly shoot, a, um, shoot two the middle of the 1930s with the after, during the Great Depression, of course, election of Franklin Roosevelt in 1932 into 1933, we see the, the, the beginnings of the works that, the work that will have to be done uh, under the New Deal. And the headline speaks to Franklin School, that's a city project, but further on, it may notice that Mr. Horgan, superintendent of parks in charge of work in the city under the federal program. And he will thus work with all the federal programs coming into the, into the city as well as into the county. Um, he went to Madison making his report to Madison for a variety of the many projects. And that uh, of course is a story unto itself. We just really, do not understand and can, can comprehend really the, the true extent that the federal projects all under the New Deal had on Wassa and the city of uh, on the city of Wassa and Marathon County. One of the big projects, of course, was the the development of Rim Mountain. This was a Civilian Conservation Corps event uh, project. Early on, it well, like the headline says, the WPA project, but it soon turned into a Civilian Conservation Corps project under the direction of I.S. Horgan, County Superintendent of Parks. So again, here, here Mr. Horgan is planning and developing the plan for what's gonna be happening at Rim Mountain. Rim Mountain was one of three major Civilian Conservation Corps projects in Marathon County, and of course, Today, uh, the shelter uh, was a part, a big part of that. The building of the shelter was a big part of the CCC projects up at Rim Mountain, um, and uh, and the ski hills and a variety of other things that were part of what was developing up Rim Mountain. Also under the civilian, uh, also under the New Deal, the the youth building at now called the Eastgate Hall at Marathon Park was built. And that was all built under the National Youth Administration. If you can see the NYA, the, the young people uh, put their signature on the, on the brick, I'm sorry, on the, on the granite of that, of that granite wall at the youth building or Eastgate Hall. 
one of the, of course, let us move out to the Dells of the Eau Claire. Um, now, one of the masterworks really of, of, of our county parks, really. I mean, it's really a gem out there. It's now on the National Register of Historic Places, and we'll speak to that a little bit later. Uh, but again, the Mr. Horgan and the Civilian Conservation Corps came out to the um, Dells of the Eau Claire and, and built the variety of projects out there. One, of course, was the footbridge across the, the, Eau, Claire, uh, the Eau Claire River, one of the major projects of the Civilian Conservation Corps um, in, at, at the Eau Claire Park all under the direction of Mr. Horgan. And I cannot emphasize again that this was uh, all under his work. Uh, later on, um, let me just back up a little bit. It was the, the initial plan for the Eau Claire Dells was developed by Charles Ramsdale. Uh, it was Mr. Horgan who oversaw, oversaw the Civilian Conservation Corps work out at the Eau Claire Dells, but the plan for the Eau Claire Dells beyond the, the footbridge uh, was all developed by, again, we hear the words Charles Ramsdale, a key landscape architect having his influence here uh, in Eau Claire Dells Park. Uh, and that, so again, his influence with regard to the New Deal is is very well known, parks were developed. I mean, his influence was quite extensive. And, uh, and, and throughout the war, and he re I'll sort of end this uh, program, uh, we just have a few minutes here, uh, with his retirement in 1965. Um, we see Mr. Horgan, and then the person in back of him is Dwayne Corbin, who will be taking over leadership of the Wassa and Marathon County Park um, work uh, when Mr. Horgan retires in 1965. But again, um, the, I think that this was said by Mr. Corbin, the philosophy of the park department as propelled by I.S. Horgan, former park superintendent and continued by Corbin has been to put a park within easy walking distance of every city resident. Again, uh, how we all evaluate the work that Mr. Horgan uh, and his fellow landscape architects put to work here in Wassa and Marathon County, it's really hard to put a judgment, but it's been great and uh, great work that he did uh, while he was superintendent spanning the 20s, the th 30s during the New Deal, uh, as well as in on, up into his retirement. Uh, to this day, we have the Ingwall Horgan Farm Museum in Marathon Park. Uh, this is, as far as I know, the only record where his name is on one of the co county buildings. I think we can do a little bit better. Perhaps the city of Wausau or Marathon County Parks committees can can find a place that really gives honor again uh, to Mr. Ingwall Horgan for all the work that he did for his many years as park superintendent uh, uh, of Marathon County and of the city of Wausau. This is, if you get a chance to visit the Farm Museum when it's open, it's quite a, quite a place to see. So again, uh, I finish with uh, with this headline uh, and a picture of Mr. Horgan. Um, again, his influence was great. Uh, he lent his his finger, his mind to many things happening within the park systems, both of Wausau and the and the county of Marathon. Uh, quite a story, quite a story of in great influence, uh, making this a city beautiful. Um, a beautiful city movement, as well as really establishing the cultural landscape. Because if we take a look at the parks, Eau Claire Dells, Marathon Park, Stewart Park, Oak Island, it's all part of our 
cultural landscape that we can really continue to appreciate uh, even to this day uh, as we go forward and as we go forward. So with that, I turn it back to Ben and he will give us a few uh, concluding remarks. Thank you, Ben. All right, so that was that was the program. Um, I don't know, I guess I think I, think I said all the... Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna jump in again here. Uh, I guess if you weren't here at the beginning, um, see here hey it's me um so we we pre-recorded this because we weren't sure whether the internet was going to work or not uh so that worked pretty well i think if we ever have to do this again i think um uh, we probably can make it work um so guess to see if anybody has any questions i i was monitoring so i know no nobody nobody chimed in which that's fine um I think actually, I just watching this back, I wanted to take a moment just to comment um, on the name spelling, because that might be something that kind of seems odd if you look at some of the stuff that Gary had included versus what we, you know, his name changes all the time. There's an E-N, sometimes it's A-N, um, sometimes it's Ingwal, sometimes it's Ingwald, often he's just I-S. So I uh, apologize for any confusion there. We tried to find one that seemed to be the best one. Um, but uh, yeah, so if that was a confusion, that's, that's the idea there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry for the confusing um, you know, un uncertainty on this. But uh, again, thanks for putting up with that. Uh, hopefully, we won't have to do this again. Or if we do, it'll be a little bit more straightforward. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll, again, uh, from the beginning, if you saw that, we're going to be doing uh, Luis Elster next week, fourth grade teacher from Wassa of, of uh, interesting story uh, in a lot of ways. So excited to talk about that next week. Hope you join us for that at 1230 on Thursday. Um, and until then, uh, have a wonderful week and we